In a 1986 portrait by the queer photographer Robert Mablethorpe, Nevelson appears as this kind of apparition in this field of black, uh, such a powerful piercing gaze looking out at the viewer. And though Nevelson herself did not identify as queer, many queer artists, including Mablethorpe, as well as artists of color and feminist artists, have seen in her a kind of model for defiance, for productive rage, and for um, how to make something out of nothing. I'm Julia Bryan Wilson, and this is Art Forum's Interpretations. Today I'll be interpreting what I call the legendary house of Louise Nevelson. Nevelson was a Jewish artist born in what is now Ukraine in 1899 moved to the U.S. when she was young and became a really big legend in the New York art world for her scavenged found object wood assemblages. One of the things I argue in the book I just published is that Nevelson acts as a kind of drag figure in that she really exaggerated um, the tropes of femininity in the way that she looked and also that her sculptures are in a kind of complicated relationship with different notions of drag. I started thinking of Nevelson as a kind of drag mother as I was working through this concept of how she herself would drag materials off the street like how someone trawls a river or drags a river to kind of scrape the streets of New York. And then I also started realizing that she had so many people, artists of color, queer artists, feminist artists, who were making work um, that was explicitly stated as an homage to her or had some of her same materials or idioms. And some of the artists that I think about as her kind of drag children include the African-American artist from LA, Noah Purifoy, who has in fact made a piece dedicated to Louise Nevelson um, from 1994 that kind of demonstrates their interesting uh, rhyming in terms of their interest in scavenging and their use of assemblage. Another of these artists that I think of as in this loose group are Leonardo Drew, who has kind of expanded on Louise Nevelson's wall-based works and exploded them out into the gallery space. Many of these homages and tributes to Nevelson from her drag children have come very recently, including this 2020 neon piece by the queer Jewish feminist artist Deborah Cass. And it's a quote attributed to Nevelson rendered in spiraling neon, which is also a kind of um, play on a famous piece by Bruce Nauman. Anger, I'd be dead without my anger. The queer feminist artists Sheila Pepe and Carrie Moyer have made a series of postage stamps featuring famous women in history. And one of them includes Louise Nevelson. In fact, it's the face drawn from the Maplethorpe portrait. And she is in between the lesbian artist Louise Fishman and the bisexual performer Louise Brooks. In 2015, Wesley Clark made a piece called My Big Black America that echoes some of the materials and forms of Nevelson's with its black scavenged wood assembled here in the shape of the continental United States. And to me, this is a very clear reference to Nevelson's all black woodworks, but he's introduced a few different elements. One is that um, referencing explicitly this mapping and also um, claiming that blackness as his own as a black man in America. And the artists who have been influenced by Nevelson are really a global group and include the Brazilian Afro-descendant artist Emmanuel Araujo, who was the founder of the Afro-Brazil Museum in Sao Paulo. In this work, tribute to Luis Nevelson, he sees rhymes of his own work with geometric forms made out of wood in the example set by Nevelson. I think one of the things that's actually most impressive about her work is how it is somewhat easy to be replicated. If you look at any arts and crafts kids projects, many of them are directly inspired by Louise Nevelson, and there are even instructions in teachers' handbooks about how to encourage your child or how to encourage a classroom in elementary school to quote unquote make a Nevelson. And while Nevelson herself has been somewhat disparaged for this kind of repeatability or iterability, I think it's one of the most brilliant aspects of her sculptural practice, which is that she so owns this kind of work that even a child in an arts and crafts project, out of found bits of wood, assembled in a box, spray painted a certain color, registers in a way as a kind of Nevelson.